Yo, what's good everybody? Today I'm gonna talk about my Melee Hunter Phase 3 bot build I'm running with, about the itemization, rotation, and all the stuff. I did run my first raid, Sangan Temple, yesterday. And I'm gonna run another one tomorrow because it's a reset. So if you guys wanna check it out, I'm gonna be streaming it as well on Twitch, which will be in the pinned comment section. Overall, Melee Hunter seems to be the highest, one of the highest DPS right now. Um, Warriors might be a bit better, but as you can see, the numbers are absolutely crazy. I am running Beast Mastery. I do have a cat as a pet. Now, there is a debuff from uh, Offhand Fist Weapon. That's an epic weapon from this raid. It drops from the last boss. Sorry, it drops from fifth boss, I think. If you have that debuff in the raid, you could probably run Serpent because Serpent has plus two levels to Lightning Breath compared to last phase. So that could be my, that might be better than the cat. But the new rune Raptor Fury on Wrist, I can see them nerfing it a little bit because the damage is really high. But then on the other hand, though, you know, they would have to nerf other builds like Warriors and whatnot. And also, main warrior, I did a build for Gladiator Stance. You can check it out right there, right up top in the corner. But anyways, this raid, I did not have all the consumables. I do not have the food buff, the squid 10 agility. I do not have Elixir of Mongoose, which is another 2% crit chance. So I'm missing that one. And yeah, I did have sappers. But... Yeah, I did have full previous, I would say, for this raid. I was running 6% hit cap. Uh, even though my hit was, uh, or crit wasn't that high, like, compared to my warrior, it feels like I was critting every time. It's really, really crazy. Now, if you get procs for a raptor at all, when it, co when it comes down to a warrior, sorry, to a hunter, it's all about the raptor procs. If you get good procs for raptor strike, you know, it's just going to pump big damage. Um, but same goes to every melee with all strike procs and crit chance procs. But it's just a show because like fifth, uh, fourth, fourth boss, sixth boss. I don't even remember. I, I can't remember uh, what, what the what the what the uh, number is of the bosses. But the world buffs we are running the Sangan Temple world buff since they nerfed the raid and everyone can clear it now. I'm a big fan of the difficulty. I really like the raid. My favorite so far. It's like season of discovery started with this phase three. We are running DMF, which is the 10% uh, damage buff from Dark Fair. Then we have Sunflower, which is great chance and all stats. Goes really well with the Heart of the Lion. Now, when it comes to Rune on the chest, if you have Second Hunter in the raid, you probably are better off running Master uh, Marksman. Marksman Rune for 5% great chance on the chest piece, but I kind of like stacking the stats. Now, Hunter may might seem very strong at this, age, at this phase, but early on. But later on, when people get full gear and biz, hunters don't scale really good with gear compared to, once again, like warriors, they scale in insanely well with gear. So we're gonna fall behind, I would say, in damage. It will still be one of the best, but yeah. Rogues are making their appearance on the damage meter as well, since they fixed the rune Honor Among Thieves. And it looks pretty interesting. But yeah, this is just a little showcase of the bosses in the raid. It's almost it's 2k Raptor right there, it's wild. Crazy. Can you imagine full biz with the weapons? I mean, the fist weapons. And I'm gonna take you in the game. I did manage to get these locks for my first run. Now you can see that we died on the last three bosses. I did not have world buffs. I didn't have anything. And yeah, once again, I was missing the food food buff. I was missing the potion of Mungus, which is at our super crit chance. And that does quite a lot. So, I'm gonna take you in the game. Talk about the talents now. We are running the full beast mastery. All the way to Beastial Wrath. You want to use this on the opener. I'm going to talk about rotation in, the, in a second, actually. So, the classic damage uh, and health here. Sorry, armor and uh, health here for the pet. We go with damage, crit chance. We go for the uh, stun, which is good for PvP. But we want to unlock Beastial Wrath here. Frenzy for attack speed. We go for some more focus regeneration on the pet, as well as the heal. And last points, we move into Savage Strikes because Raptor is our main ability. You can forget about Mungus Bite. It's a totally useless ability here. But main support is for Raptor Strike, the crit chance. So, yeah, that's why I was critting so, so often. But even on flanking, the crits on flanking are also pretty sick. Humanoid Slaying works in PvP. Monster Slaying, this is Dragonkin, which is Sunken Temple. And you're going to have like three or two free points you can... Put them wherever you want. I put them in Beast Swiftness here. And also put it in Pathfinding for, you know, when you cannot really... There, there is a lot of running in the raid. So if you pop this, it's really good. It's a lot of trash mobs as well in the raid. So this was the setup. Talk about the gear now. Now I have the... Most of the stuff is from Phase 2. But we have the letterworking Phase 2 headpiece for hit chance and weapon damage. 
It should, the one weapon damage is about 14 attack power, something like that. Depends like how much uh, AP you have. Amulet here is from the Gnomer Gun last boss. Shoulders ahead was from Gnomer Gun in the footage. I did not have these ones, are the new ones, epic craft ones, and they are insane. Shrieking shoulders and paranoia. They're both sim about the same, up to you. I like the stamina here because I would like to run PvP, so that's what I like. But melee shoulders do give you intellect instead of stamina, so it will be good if you have long kill times and raid, it will be good with your sustain for mana. But the shoulders ahead, Normigan first boss Gerubis are right here. I had these in the raid, Truck Slayer Pauldrons. So yeah. Cloak STV level 40 crit chance. You should be getting the one from BRD. That one gives you agi and strength. Let me see if I can quickly find it. I'm not sure if they updated it for if this updated here. It is interrogator. Oh, what am I doing? This BMD. Where is that bad boy? Real quick. BRD. Hi interrogator. Right here. Blackwell Cape. You should get this one for sure. I still need to farm it on both characters. It's pretty bad drop rate. Triple set piece, Electromantic. This is phase two Gnomer Gun once again. Great chance with the item, attack power set piece, and the hit chance on the boot on the pants. The boots are really bad. Just agility and intellect, really bad. You probably run something else like Yef Revered from Arathi Basin, Reputation. Or the Croco Croc boots from Crocodile and Marodon. Or the from a rare rare mob from Zulfark. That's also probably that was the that would be the best previous. Wrists here from Warzone Reputation. Now there is a better pair that you get from Domegan. Sorry, but that you get from uh, Engineering. You can craft those. They will give you one more agility than these, but it's pretty expensive right now. Gloves here. In the footage, I was running White Touch Leather Gloves. Now with these new shoulders that give you hit chance, I'm going to run these gloves. Where are they? Right here. Pathfinder. These come from a quest in Winter Spring. I did yesterday with the boys from the guild. It starts here. It's called Winterfall Activity. So you want to get this quest and kill the uh, kill the mobs right here. The belt engineering phase 2 hit chance, crit chance on use is pretty good if you can make the gamba 50-50, the crit chance. The set pieces are shown. Here are the rings. This is revered from Warsong Reputation. And Blackstone Ring for hit chance is from Morodon. From the princess. Now you can get the same one for 12 wild offerings, which is a quest line. You can unlock a, a rune from that. I believe it was called lock and load. The rune from that quest line. So it's 1% hit. Trinket from BFD. Still this one, but I would like to use the one from the quest. It's called. It's a class quest from Hunter. You gotta kill more fast. There is a series of quests you can, you have to do to uh, to get here. But this is the trinket. Only 2 minute cooldown for 20 seconds, 150 AP and chance to hit by 2%. It is pretty insane, pretty mental, so I'm going to be using that one. And last one is Breath of the Beast, another offering trinket. This one is also 12 offerings, great chance, hit chance, amazing stuff, you want this one. The bow here I'm still running from level 40 STV, you should get the one from this phase, level 50 bow, because that one gives you 75 strength and not 50, so I need to farm it until tomorrow's raid, hopefully. Protect the sword in Advent, you want slow weapons. This is from the Rep Reputation Revered and Thrash Blade. This is extra attack like Wild Strikes or Wind Fury. So you want to get that one. Another, the another upgrade to this one could be Rip Splitter X, which is Banner Equip, a BOE. It's super expensive though. You should get the one with, it's called Tiger. Tiger, because that gives you strength, agility, and it has also attack power. So it's also pretty good. But Thrash Blade is, you know, it's, it's it's free. You just kill, you just have to kill Princess in Marodon, and that's uh, how you get it. So this was the setup of the gear. I'm gonna talk about the, the runes. On the headpiece, we got a new one. I get get like reflexes for flanking strike reduction by 50%. Cool arm reduction. The chance to dodge is also pretty good. And sometimes you do so much damage, you will rip aggro depending on what tank is in the raid. So this does not sound bad, right? This sounds pretty good. Also good for PvP. Heart of the Lion is a chess piece. If you have secondary hunter who runs this, you can probably run Master Marksman for 5% crit chance. On the waist, straightforward melee specialist for Raptor Strike cooldown. On the pants, we go Flanking Strike. It's another melee ability that buffs a Raptor Strike. And boots, we have a dual wield spec for damage increase from Avent. 
Wrist is the new rune, Raptor Fury. Every time you Raptor Strike, you're going to get damage increase for another Raptor Strike. So if you get lucky on procs, on the reset procs from Melee Specialist, you will get five stacks of this one and it will hit like a goddamn truck. And then we got Beastmaster in the hands to buff your pet's damage since you are Beastmastery. And that will be the rune setup. Rotation. A lot of hunters are making still this, still making this mistake. You want to only and always use Raptor Strike when it's available. You only use Flanking Strike if your Raptor Strike is on cooldown. You never want to stack this Flanking Strike for 3 stacks to buff your Raptor Strike. No, 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 no. Especially with this new rune, Raptor Fury, your priority is always Raptor Strike over anything on your hip skill bar. Anything. Over anything. So yeah. Recommend using this on opener, Beast of Wrath. Because some of the, most of the fights are more than 2 minutes, so you might be able to use this twice. Now, if you can get the, the trinket from this plus quest line, you would want to macro the eye and piece of wrath on the same macro. Because your pet will, you know, benefit from incre your increased attack power. So, he will have the highest damage during this beast of wrath window. If you have both headpiece and the gloves from Leatherworking, you want to stagger them because they do not stack. So I always start with the headpiece first and then I use the gloves because this one also increases your threat. You do not want to have this on opener. So I'll always go with this one. And that, that, that pretty much goes for the uh, rotation. You do not want to feign death and trap. That's for survival build, which is not really viable this phase at all. You also want to have... Aspect of the Hawk for ranged attack power. I know it sounds weird, even though we are melee, but your pet does scale from ranged AP. Not really sure what the conversion is, but your pet will get benefit, will do more damage from a ranged AP, so this is pretty good. You want to use Wiper when you're really out of, ma out of mana, but I recommend using at least this potion, which is not that expensive. It's because, you know, Wiper reduces your damage by 10%, which is, I, I would say, quite a lot. And this would be it for rotation. When it comes to your pet, I did go for, well, you want to have, you want to have Bite and Claw rank 7 or Lightning Breath level 7, but that's a rare in Feralus, which is really hard to spawn, I mean, sorry, camp, because it just doesn't spawn at long spawn time. It, he, he's around this area. It's the uh, Serpent you can tame with level 7 Breath. It's the only one in open world. The another, another one is in the raid itself. You need to tame. Serpent and I might actually do it for the raid tomorrow since the warrior in the raid will have the fist weapon for the debuff I'm gonna show you the fist weapon real quick it's Right here. I believe it's from Morphess. Yes, right here So reducing nature damage 60 and increasing holy nature damage taken by 8% That's pretty insane. This is pretty insane. So I will try to I might I might get it I think serpent will be better with this one. So I'll, I'll just test it. I'll just test it might make a bit video and whatnot and the passives I went went for from a pet, um, I went for rank two on resistances sixty because pet is very limited with talent points. You cannot get all of the uh, all of the skills and passes from the trainer. So re the resistance rank two, and uh, growl that's the taunt that's free, doesn't cost anything. And for greater stamina and armor, which are the most expensive passives, I went with rank six. So as you can see, I ended up with only eight points free, which you cannot buy anything with that. So I think this is the perfect setup for the pet. He did not die on slime. I know a lot of a um, lot of hunters re responded that their pet died on the slime second boss, but mine didn't. So I think this is just perfect. With full buffs, it's six thousand HP on the pet. It's pretty insane. Talking about the consumables for the raid, it gets pretty expensive, especially now. Ever since incursions were so insane early on, people were getting so much gold from it. Then everything just inflated so much. So everything is so goddamn expensive. So that's why I didn't have Mongoose. But you should use the Strength Potion here, Giants. An Agility Potion. If you are wealthy and can afford Mongoose, you should get this one. Because this one is replacing the Agility Potion. As it's another 3% crit chance. Next up, we got the food that I did not also have. Which is Grilled Squid 10 Agility. We got a lot of Agility. So, you know, with Lion, it's going to stack very well. Next up, we got Sappers or Dynamites for damage. Goes very well on AoE fights like the Double Dragon or like um, Aranicus that spawns adds. Always save it there. I, did, I think I did not do that. I go with Dance Sharpening Stone, my offhand. You should probably go with Shadow Oil, but that one is also pretty damn expensive, so I did not get it. Mana Potions for sustain if the fights are long. If you don't have a Mage, you should go for Elixir of Intellect. 
Sometimes I go for nature potions, but I don't think that needed now because the raid is relatively easy. Now we have also the new flask from the raid, Atalai Mojo of War. You can buy the, 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 the item required to get this mojo. It's called Flask of something i forgot but you can buy it from auction house it's 17 gold from on my server this one does purchase through death this does not get deleted because deleted this doesn't get deleted if you die so 17 for one uh, flask is i don't know it's, it's quite a lot can i see it here it's not shown but you can get this flask in stranglethorn vale on yoyamba joyamba island whatever it's called pronounced it's right here fastest way for alliance is to go from sentinel hill so just go go here and just um, hand it in for this flask. I didn't I didn't have this one either, so I was actually missing one of the three biggest consumables in the rain. I did not have this either in the rain, so I'm pretty excited what it's gonna do. And for the pet, I go for scroll with scrolls of strength and agility. That's what you want to look for. I think there's a better scroll, but it's I don't know, man. I would just I would have to rob someone, or I don't know for the for the amount of gold it costs. Everything costs crazy. It's crazy. Let me see if I can, if I have any some more consumables, but I think that's pretty much it. Would have guessed that, huh? War buffs. You want to get these three. It's Songflower, which gives you crit chance and stat increase. Once again, goes well with Lion aspect. These Songflowers are spawning randomly in Felwood. This, I believe this add-on is called Noah War buffs. I think Noah War buffs shows these timers. It is very accurate. It shows you what layer here. As the spawner, uh, like what's what's what time is left on the on these uh, layers? It is literally to the second accurate. They did three times, always you know in time. Next up, we got DMF buff, ten percent damage, Sage Dark Fortune. Not right now. It's in the Elven Forest. Next week there is a break, and then it's Thunder Bluff, Mulgore, and then Fervor of the Temple of Explorer. That's the uh, STV. Sorry, Sunken Sung Temple World Buff. It drops in Booty Bay. It drops on the island. People get it on the beach here as well. So. I always get it in booty bank, just fly there and wait. It drops like handy every time because now people can clear it easily. And I believe we covered about everything. If I did not mention stuff, let me know in the comment section. And also I stream every day on Twitch. You can find my link in the description, a pinned comment. I would like, I would be more than happy to see there, but happy hunting. Have a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, have a good one. Peace.